Ekelstrom was a labor activist and folk singer who blew into Utah one day in 1913 to work at the mines in Park City. While Hill was in Utah, two masked men entered a Salt Lake City grocery store and killed the clerk, John G. Morrison, and his son Arlene. One of the assassins was shot, which made Hill a prime suspect when he showed up to a doctor that evening with a bullet wound he said he received in an argument over a woman. A few days later, he was arrested and booked into the Salt Lake Jail. Despite a lack of evidence and his continued claims of innocence, Hill was convicted of the murder and sentenced to death by firing squad. His union activity and folk songs, combined with the suspicious nature of his trial, had made his case a national headline. Everyone from President Woodrow Wilson and Helen Keller to the Swedish ambassador and IWW workers from across the country called for Governor Spry to grant Hill a new trial, but the governor refused. On November 19, 1915, at the site of the Utah State Prison in present-day Sugar House Park, Hill was executed by firing squad, dying as a martyr for the cause of labor in the United States. Just before his execution, he wrote to a friend, Don't waste any time in mourning. Organize. Organizer, another union. Organizer. Way over in that union burying ground. My will is easy to decide, for there is nothing to divide. My king don't need to fuss and moan. Moss does not cling to a rolling stone. My body, oh, if I could choose, I would to ashes it reduce. And let the merry breezes blow, my dust to where some flowers grow. Perhaps some fading flower then would come to life and bloom again. This is my last and final will. Good luck to all of you. Joe Hill. I'll sing of Joseph Hillstrom, better known as old Joe Hill. Murdered by a firing squad, shot but never killed. His will said that his ashes be strewn across the land So flowers that refuse to die will rise up strong and stand We sing his songs to fan the flames and talk about him much The ashes of this rebel voice are still too hot to touch Joe's corpse lay in Chicago where 30,000 marched they flew the wobbly banner high above the throng it arched. The workers sang and cheered his name, they did not eulogize. They honored Joe Hill's last request, don't mourn, organize. And the union took Joe's body, which then they did cremate. His ashes stuffed in envelopes and mailed to every state. Except, of course, to Utah, for Joe had clearly said, don't leave me here in Utah, there I wouldn't be caught dead. We sing his songs to fan the flames and talk about him much. The ashes of this rebel voice are still too hot to touch. Then someone in the mailroom discovered what was up. The postmaster was summoned, the mailing to disrupt. An envelope tore open in the canceling machine Was just Joe's way of saying automation is obscene With patriotic fervor that postmaster was seized He treated that poor envelope as if it was diseased He said I won't deliver such subversive mail So for a while Joe had to wait in some dead letter file we sing his songs to fan the flames and talk about him much. The ashes of this rebel voice are still too hot to touch. At long last the post office sent Joe's ashes to D.C. To the archives like an artifact of ancient history. 
The Wobblies in Chicago asked that he be sent home. They wouldn't see him catalog down in that catacomb. So Joe's back with the Wobblies, and thus concludes my tale. But if there is a moral, I might say, don't trust the mail. We'll build that one big union before Joe's ash gets cold, and we'll bring to birth a new world from the ashes of the old. We sing his songs to fan the flames and talk about him much. The ashes of this rebel voice are still too hot to touch. We sing his songs to fan the flames and talk about him much. The ashes of this rebel voice are still too hot to touch. The ashes of this rebel voice are still too hot to touch.